Yo, it is James, and it is also story time. We're going to go back with my only friend in the homeless shelter that I'm at, Mojo. We're going to be doing a three-part mini stories on Mojo, one for each of the last three weeks. And at the end, I'm going to kind of ask you if you've ever met somebody like this. People like him are pretty special, but I think we all end up meeting a Mojo at one point in time. First story. Three weeks ago, I'm chilling with him in his room, right? I just helped him clean it up. He passes the vape pen, and he's telling me a story about how he almost hooked up with someone tonight, right? He indeed had been texting a lady. The story is great. You should listen to it. So, of course, he starts with tons of confidence. Like, yo, this chick wants me so bad. She was almost going to come over here, and I had to be like, hey, hey, hey. We're not supposed to do that, so maybe turn around and we'll think about it another time, right? So I was like, wow, man. You're really in control in this story, right? And he continues. He's like, yeah, she was fine, man. I'm, <laughs> she's one of my mom's friends. I was instantly like, hold on. This guy's like 39 years old, right? How old is this mom's friend? Well, I'd find out in just a few minutes. Because as he was going into detail about, she's so fine, she wanted me, she has her own car, man. She was going to drive over here and I had to be like, turn back. So as he's again, just kind of like repeating himself, basically, he gets a phone call. Phone call is his mother and his mother starts chewing him the fuck out. And yeah, this is, this is about Mojo here at the homeless shelter, right? She starts chewing him out and you can hear everything that's happening. And he just sits back wide eyed and he's like, yeah, he's <laughs> like all of his bullshit leads to the system. And so what actually happened was he had flirted with his very old lady, like pushing 70 like I think she was literally 69 years old and she was drunk and he was like wow you're attractive come to this homeless shelter and have sex with me on the way there mom's friend of course talks to his mom and his mom's like hell no don't go over there turn around you weirdo you don't want to do that right so that's how she turned around and she ended up texting him and letting him know like yeah we're not actually doing this like I, I feel bad for flirting with you this is this is bad I'm not and so that's that's what actually happened and after the end of the conversation he just like looks down for like five seconds doesn't even look at me and just wide-eyed he's just very really wide eyes and just starts cracking up and laughing and saying now you know now you know so okay that's story number one well, the next story, uh, this one takes place like exactly a week later. These are all separated by like a week. He told me a story about how he just got back from a family reunion, right? And that started out like, man, I ate so good. Like half my whole family was there. It was amazing. Like people were laughing at my jokes. And at some point, you know, with all this positivity, he just slips in. One kind of strange thing happened, but I don't know about it. I'm like, that one right there, what happened? You know, Mojo, that's not what I call him in real life, but keeping him anonymous. I'm like, no, Mojo, what happened? <laughs> this is how all the good fucking stories with this guy start. And he's like, well, you know, I'm not the best at judging social situations. And I'm like, yeah, you're right about that. And now this is definitely a really good story. What happened? So he was like, okay, well, basically, while he was hanging out with everybody, his niece approaches him right? And she's from Detroit. And to put it in his words, she wants to act better than she really is. So I think she's trying to like be hood or something, right? So she approaches him and she's like, yo, let me hit your vape pen of marijuana, right? And so he's like, says no a bunch of times, according to him, until the, her little brother jumps in and he's like, well, she does whatever she wants anyway, man. It's not a big deal. And he's like, okay, fine, hit it, right? And so she hits it and her mom sees his, you know, aunt or whatever, and gets all pissed, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking like, well, okay, one, having the uncle at the family reunion from the homeless shelter smoking up his niece isn't like, isn't super classy, right? But it's kind of, it's kind of uncle behavior. I can, I can understand where this is going on, coming from until I'm like, well, yeah, but because I'm just assuming that his his niece is like 17 or something right something like 19 maybe like something reasonable so i just 
don't even bother asking that. I'm just like, well, how old was the uh, the nephew sticking up for, man? That was cool for a young man. He was like, nine. I'm like, nine? <laughs> how old's the niece? It's like, 14. I'm like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> That's why it was a problem. That's where the awkward social situation came from that you couldn't quite figure out. That's what happened. <laughs> Third story. This last one's kind of good because he's been working at this one restaurant for a very long time. And this restaurant doesn't really respect him at all, right? It's just obvious. Other people can get the hours they want. They'll take a vacation when they want. And they always just make him work hours because they just know he's going to go along with it. Like, he doesn't really know how to say no, even though he presents as a guy who says no, right? So he gets taken advantage of in this job. And this is a story ultimately about him quitting which is a very good thing. I'm proud of him for quitting. I'm worried about the possibility of him getting another job, but good for him. So he just mentions how his ex-manager, he started texting his wife, propositioning her for sex because, well, I might as well try since I don't think I'm going back. And in his words, she was almost kind of into it. I read the text, and I gotta say, she wasn't at all fucking into it. She was evading and avoiding that conversation. <laughs> and the story kind of ends there. That was just his his way of burning the bridge. That, so that's where he's at. He's looking for a new job right now. And so I think this guy has a little bit of the tism, you know? I know he is... I know he's bi, and he's on Grinder all the time. I don't... Recently, he's been, he's been trying with these strange mistresses. <laughs> I don't know... <laughs> He's a weird dude. But, you know, addict life can be kind of messy. And you, you, you experience it. If you're in this life, you end up becoming friends with other people who are in this life and definitely deserve it. And they're not bad people, but they are interesting. So, you ever know anybody like that? Someone you objectively wouldn't ever really hang out with at all, but you just end up becoming friends with them and rooting for them. That's the first part. That's that's the question. I'm I'm curious about that actually. I know that I'm laying down, but I try to work out after the Fourth of July. And listen, I pulled the shit out of my neck for trying to work out my lame addict body. So that's why I'm on the floor. Also, my um my stuff needs updates, and I don't know how to do that. So I'm gonna do that this week and figure it out. Next Friday's video will be like better and of better quality. But my neck hurts, and I can't figure out how to update anything. I'm laying on the floor because I'm in fucking pain. Have a great week.